What's up? Hello. What's going on? I thank you guys for uh, listening to Two in the Cooler. We appreciate it. As always, you can follow us on social media at Two in the Cooler and definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're posting clips on there from every episode. All kinds of great stuff going on. Don't forget to vote in the Who Would Win of the Week, too. That's the best reason, aside from all the great clips and stuff, to follow us on Twitter and on Instagram because that's where we put our Who Would Win of the Week polls. If you're new to the show, thanks for listening. And uh, we would appreciate it if you would share the show. That helps us out a ton. And you can rate and subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts. For some reason, that is like the be-all, end-all of podcasting. I don't really know why. Maybe because they were the first. But that's just the way it is. So thank you to everybody who's already done that. And if you guys want to do it, we would really appreciate that. This episode of Two in the Cooler comes to you in affiliation with Instacart. 2020 is over, but some of the problems have carried into 2021. I hate to say it, but it's true. Still got a lot of worries out there. Why not take one thing off your plate and start using Instacart to get some of your favorite products from some of your favorite local stores delivered right to your door in as little as one hour? Best part is, Tune the Cooler listeners get free delivery, free delivery on their first order of $35 or more. Just hit the link in our show notes to get that deal and get using Instacart. Thank you for listening, people. Here's the episode. Matthew, joining us live from Florida, the second podcast that you have done remote from Florida. Um... Whereas if you're keeping track, the number of podcasts that I have done remote from Florida is zero. Um, I'm just living in the cold uh, because I'm a, just a pale, pale, sad person apparently. And uh, and Florida, I guess is I, Florida, I guess is just not for me. I was gonna go to Florida in what uh, April, I think, last April. Um, yeah. But uh, something something happened. Yeah, I don't know I what, I but remember I remember something. Came, I do remember something came something, up. Yes, yeah, something big yeah, yes. happened. I can't remember what it was, but people were, you know, flights were getting canceled and stuff like that. So couldn't couldn't do it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why. Yeah, I don't remember exactly what happened, but I do know that there was some type of complication, and you weren't able to make it. But good news is, I'm here now, and I'm <laughs> holding down the fort. It's funny because a lot of funny things about it come out. Well, a lot of, I, I'm going to go off it for a second. It's going to start with you. It's going to end up nowhere close to what we started sure, talking about. The way we like First, to do it. Yes. It's funny because usually in like our pre-show routine, Andrew and I will discuss our level of comfort, such as whether we got a blanket over our legs today, <laughs> house temperature, you know, we, and we talk about it on the pod too. So Andrew did say, as usual, that his blanket is on his lap. Me, on the other hand, I do have shorts on the lower body um, and I'm not cold at all. No winter hat today. In fact, we got the Bills hat on, and this is where we're going to start. We're going to okay. talk about the Buffalo football Bills, power football rankings, last one of the season. Come on again. Bills are number one. They're playing the Colts Saturday, 1.05 p.m. Blue lights are just going to be getting sucked down like they've never been sucked down before. 6,700 fellow Buffalonians in the stadium. I guarantee you they're not going to be quiet. I actually saw a comparison that those 6,700 Buffalo fans are similar to the Spartans, like 300 style, right? Oh, like they could yeah. take on any 6,000 Buffalo fans could take on any 80,000 state st- fan stadium. I wouldn't even second guess that. Who would win of the week? Early episode, early episode, quick. Who would win of the week? Um, what do we call them? Like when we don't do them, the, but we, uh, the honorable, honorable, mention. honorable mention. Just under seven thousand Bills fans versus a full stadium of any other NFL fan base. Bills win every time. That's not, not even a question. A contest. Yes. So we got there. So Colts this week, big game. I I see W's written all over it, but it's playoff football. We never know. We don't get ahead of ourselves. Let's go Bills. Then we jump over. Boom. Double apparel. USA Hockey. Let's talk about USA Hockey for a second, Andrew. Yeah, do you know what they it. did last night? Did they? I, I did not check the score of the game. I know they were playing Canada. What happened? Oh, yeah. They won the gold medal last night against uh, Hockey Canada, the country that claims to have invented hockey. 
two nothing. They actually shut them out. That's funny how that works. They shut Canada. them out yesterday. It was two to zero. Canada scored Holy zero shit. goals. The USA scored two goals. Goals. That's crazy. so then. The Canada gets silver medals. That means USA gets gold medals. That's how that works when you play in gold medal games. So suck it, Canada. I actually don't mind Canada. I really like Canada. But when it comes to hockey, I can't fucking stand them. And let me tell you why. Because they're all pricks. They're all ignorant. They're all, oh, my God, before the tournament, oh, my God, dude, Canada's got 19 first-round draft picks, blah, blah, blah. You know, guess what? Suck it, buddy. Even during the game yesterday, that's all they talked about to start the game. Oh, Canada's fourth line would all Canada's fourth line would be a first line on any other team in the tournament. Well, guess what? Didn't help him last night, did it? You didn't even score a goddamn goal. Not even one. Gold medal game. You did not score a goal. And then, so today, all the Canada fans, we have 18 gold medals. However many gold medals we have. Guess what? I don't care. And let me tell you why. Since 2010, the USA has four gold medals. Canada has three. Career, gold medal games, USA versus Canada. USA is four and one. You're playing a tournament in your home country that you practically invented, and you just got your dicks kicked in, and then they get all upset because USA brings a big-ass garbage can on the ice with the Hockey Canada logo on it for when they're taking their gold medal picture. Yeah, suck that, Canada. Suck it. I got a follow-up story. I'm still going. Keep it, keep it up. Keep it up. We're in Florida. Some of the family here as well. My Uncle Keith here as well. He gets to the airport to get his rental car when he first got here. The first thing the guy working at Avis, the rental car place, says to him, very first thing, when he says his last name, Canada, as you know, the rental car guy doesn't say, oh, are you Canadian? Doesn't say anything. Just says, I hate Canadians. And when when I heard that story, I was like, what an ignorant comment. Like, what if Uncle Keith was from Canada? You know what I mean? Like, what a very dumb thing to say to some, somebody before you even see their license and know where they're from or whatever as a rental car place. But then I start to think about it, and I said, you know what? I wish that fucking Avis guy was in this house last night so he could have fired me up even more than I was already fired up watching Canada. Again, get their dicks kicked in. Zero goals in a gold medal game. Coming into the game, everybody's like, Canada hasn't given up a five-on-five goal in the whole tournament. Six games, no five-on-five goals. Guess what? USA scored two of them last night. Guess how many Canada scored last night? Oh, yeah, we already talked about it. Zero. Suck it. Hockey. Canada. Suck at Hockey Canada. However, side note, Dylan Cousins, Jack Quinn, both Sabres prospects. I don't want them to suck it. Everybody else on Hockey Canada should suck it, though. Everybody else. Well, let's see where they end up before we decide whether or not they should be sucking anything. Who? Jack Quinn and the other guy you said. Dylan Cousins? No, I like them. They don't have to. Oh, just it. regardless? Okay, I thought because yeah, they're 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 on their way to Sabres training camp right now. They just you know, they just got a silver medal, participation <laughs> trophy practically. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so we'll see how it goes. That's pretty much my sports rant for the day. Except I still think that I'm sure that at some point again we'll end up talking about the Bills because how could you not look at this? Yeah. Look at this. It's a really good Players' Tribune article out there right now written by De- Deion Dawkins. I would suggest looking it up if you're a Bills fan. Okay, now we can start uh, <laughs> talking about aliens or whatever else we got on the table for the day. I don't think I got so. got my sports rant. Well, phenomenal. Yeah, it's an exciting time, which is crazy because it's also obviously Cause it's not an exciting, not an exciting time, time yeah, in the slightest. Yeah, um, yeah. There's been a glitch in the uh, in the simulation, and all of a sudden, as much as things are going bad, things are starting to heat up. I'd be nervous. Oh, I'd be nervous if I was just about anybody else besides somebody from Buffalo. Yeah, man, I can't, I can't wait. It's so exciting just to see everything going on with the team and in the city. I gotta be honest, I get a little angry. 
now that the Bills are doing so good that so many, like, public figures and stuff are trying to hop on the wagon. That honestly upsets me. And I don't, look, I see both ways. Like, I shouldn't get upset like they're excited for the team, and that's and that's a great thing. You know, it's, it's nice to have folks on the side or whatever. But if you've, if you've lived the way that we have lived, where you are just... People have basically spit on the bills for a long time. Like, how many? I cannot. How how many times have you gotten furious at in the past several years when game commentators, analysts, whatever, have started talking about the bills? And even oh. games when the bills have played well have always attributed it to the other team Poor play playing poorly, of, yeah. not the bills oh. playing well. That's happened. That's happened with the Bills too many times to count. And now that they've they're they're proving themselves to be phenomenal, and you're like, oh well, I guess there there you go. Like, oh go go Bills. Like, get the fuck out of here. If you were, if you, I guess it's a cliche to say, but if you weren't with us, then you should like get the fuck out of my face. Like, don't be with yeah. us now. If you didn't love us asshole. at your worst, you shouldn't be able to love us at your best. I you don't agree. deserve us. I agree, and this is what I'll say. I've seen a lot of cool things. One thing that I saw that I loved was a big um, thread about Wyoming. Um, because Wyoming doesn't have a professional football team, but they do have a college football team, one that Josh Allen actually played at. And I saw a lady from Wyoming kind of say that, like, Wyoming has become – complete bills culture which one fire me up wyoming i might head out there just for you know just for a weekend bring a case of blue light yeah spread the love i mean when you're looking at buffalo western new york you know of the whole area the surrounding area that is bills country um i love it grew up we love it. Everybody that's from there loves it for the most part. But you could definitely tell that for the majority of our young lives, it was viewed as a toilet. We had pretty much no good sports teams. A couple of years of Sabres success in the, in, in the mid-2000s, but we won't even, you know, get yeah. into the Sabres. And then, you know, there was people there was shit to do. The weather sucked. You know, you could add on to the list of reasons why people hated Buffalo, but the people in Buffalo saw it the exact opposite, right? Mm-hmm. They were like, "Fuck these people. This is this is this is our territory," kind of thing. Um, and now that it's on the come up, I mean, and I'm not just talking about the Bills being good. Now I'm talking about everything in general. You you talk, I'm talking about the way the city of Buffalo mm-hmm. operates now. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's things going on. There's people out and about there's stuff happening in the city and it starts with the Buffalo football bills. I re- and, and it's, and I think that even the, even the players on that team realize that, like, I mean, you can get all sports cliche and say, Oh, it's, it's about more than football, but it is about more than football. You're in the middle of a worldwide pandemic with a team that hasn't been shit since before I was even a thought in my parents' mind. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of talk going on out there. A lot of people jumping on the bandwagon. Mm-hmm. I don't mind people, you know, I will never tell somebody, I would never turn somebody down from jumping on the bandwagon, though. But yeah. you'll always know that, like, if somebody wants to be a Bills fan, root on the Bills, it's fine. But you'll always know who, who, who is really there, right? That's it's right. easy to tell. That's right. We'll always know the real people who believe this. Yeah. Because when the going got tough, we kept on going. Whereas the Buffalo Football Bills, there was never even a there was never even a moment in any of our minds where, where we, we were going to be something other than a Bills a different fan. Way. Exactly. Yep. That's what yeah. we could never see it a different way. And Buffalo, I think, is a city that just has a chip on its shoulder naturally at this point. That's what it's evolved into. And yeah, the slogan that- for the city of Buffalo is. Buffalo and All America City, which I think is the stupidest slogan ever, but it's so true, especially when suck it, hockey Canada, suck it, hockey Canada. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. 
is that spirit is what the city of Buffalo is. At this point, it's probably the most American city in the country as like when you consider the the old school ideals of what America is supposed to be. Like Buffalo is the Constitution. Buffalo is the Declaration of Independence. Buffalo is the Liberty Bell. And if you put some lemon juice on the back there, you're going to see a map to treasure. That's what Buffalo is. There's, There's going to be, be a cipher. cipher. Buffalo Buffalo's is a cipher one town. big ass cipher that leads you to success. And in this case, success equals, I don't know, maybe a Super Bowl? I didn't say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> I'm thinking it. We're all thinking it. We'll we see are, what happens. Yeah. We don't get ahead of ourselves. Colts, 105, Saturday, be there. Do whatever you got to do. So I'll say that I was hoping, you know, obviously I'm very grateful to be in the Sunshine State as of right now. I was hoping to try to be back. I was going to try to come home on Saturday, assuming the Bills played on Sunday, so that I could be in the 716 for the contest, although I wouldn't be there, you know, still. Um but then the game gets played on Saturday, so you rule that out. You, so I'm coming home after that. But I don't know. I just lost my train of thought. I just can't. I you can't stay focused when you're talking about the Buffalo Football Bills. It's a very difficult thing just to do. So riled up. Yeah, and suck it, Hockey Canada. Suck it, Hockey Canada. God damn it, that's a great shirt. Except for Dylan Cousins and Jack Quinn. Yeah, yeah. That's a good, so I, that's a good shirt. I, yeah, I, I do like that shirt. I would like – Um. yeah. Um. All right, so we'll get away – there as we get away from sports talk, the one thing I want to bring up, um, and I don't know if you've seen anything about it. So we've talked about Barstool Sports on here before. We, you know, we've, we listen to – their. I listen to a lot of their podcasts. Um, I wear their merchandise, all that good stuff. I, have you seen what – Dave Portnoy has been up to these days, though. Have you heard anything about what he's got going on over there? Yeah, it's a uh, big As far news. as, they like, even, the Barstool Fund goes yeah, and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, they even did a story at the local news station where I work about it. Um wasn't a good story that they – well, whatever. But, yeah, it's it's, you know, it's everywhere. It's making a big splash, which is a great thing. What are you yeah. looking up? Um, I was just looking because I wanted to see I, – I, when I looked this morning, I believe that um, it was at like $19 million or something like that. that Maybe it's about right. Because it was a little, it was a little dollars. That yesterday. And like, wow. Like you talk about making an impact in a time where everything's going to shit. Like <laughs> you talk about – you know, the American dream, like we were talking about, you know, Buffalo, the American dream since the month of March has just absolutely died and been flushed down the toilet. Well, and it's been, it's been killed as well. Parents it's been. told it. It's not like it died of natural it's, causes. Parents it was murdered. Told it that, yeah, they brought it to a farm and it can run wherever it wants. You know what I mean? It's it's just been absolute shit on it. And Dave Portnoy, a person who you know, and a lot of people look at Dave Portnoy and like, oh, this guy's cocky. He always talks about how money much money he has. He's an asshole. But you have to remember that everything that Dave Portnoy has in Barstool, he he built, he worked for, he started that himself. And now look at that company. And he realizes that I I, I think that he looks at it as shit. If this pandemic would have happened. Six or seven years ago, when we were just on the brink of reaching the level that like pushed us to where we are now, like that stuff might never happen, right? And I even saw that there was a, uh, I don't, it's a store, I don't know if it's a restaurant or a bakery in Williamsville, New York, that um, got selected to be part of the bar stuff on the Eagles Nest, something of that nature. I'm not sure. I've never actually, I had never heard of it, but you know, it just, goes to show that I mean it's, it's it's your community too right at this point he's turning the like the whole country into one big community of hey let's let's not let people suffer because you know of this net, this global pandemic whatever and uh I am pretty impressed with that I think that uh you know 
Oh, nobody ever wants to see anybody fail, I guess, in that sense when it comes like to business. You don't want to see people like have their lives ruined or whatever. But there's also a lot of people in positions of power who didn't step up to do what Dave did. And I think that um, – and also just wa- – you have you been watching the videos of when he calls – people to tell them that they like are going to be part of the fund um they're pretty uh emotional so i i have absolute not watched a lot tear of them. yeah absolute tear to every single one every single one especially old people man there's a few not i don't mean to say old but like there's a few where there's like um you know they'll call like the store owner or whatever restaurant owner and they've owned it for like you know 50 years or something these people are like 70 years old and they've never had to deal with any you know financial stress to this extent because they've never had to close their doors for nine months yeah or however these long are people that probably at at least Ten. at a certain point have never taken a vacation for uh, you know a very long period of times so definitely when they were starting these business and and now they're they're being forced to and and that's a thing is the the thing that I would think about with this barstool fund is like they're get this is the most help that businesses have gotten during the pandemic and it's not coming from the government it's coming from an outside source and that's the thing this whole pandemic has really disenfranchised the idea of our government and stuff in the minds of people already. And now to see this company helping out, saving, saving people's livelihoods nationwide, it's fascinating on what the, I think it's, it's a lot of things. It's, it's inspiring. It's, I think it's, it's just interesting to see like what the, what, how much is going to come from this in the zeitgeist of America yeah. throughout the, you know, in the, in the coming months, <laughs> coming years, I guess, really. I, I think that if there, I think that I would be actually pro Dave Portnoy president of the United States. That'll never happen Yeah, for more than a thousand reasons. Right. I don't think you can be president if you've ever been arrested. I don't think you can even be president yeah. if you like, smoke weed i don't think right and dave portnoy of course know, is the president of uh, so. monster, hit, monster hits only yeah is, is dave portnoy's uh uh whatever that's oh, what he always wow. says and uh, as he's that. laying by his pool in, in nantucket yeah they're uh big marijuana guys over at uh oh, okay. Barstool Sports. i didn't know that either. Yep. okay these guys yeah. are all right yep. these guys are Andrew's all right like, hmm, i wonder if i can get a job at barstool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now the wheels are spinning um but yeah, oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, you're still there? I got a yeah, little, I got a little frozen. Sorry, my, my apologies. You know, Florida Wi Fi. Everything Wi-Fi. goes a little bit slower in the South, as they always that say, bright, right? That Bright House Networks. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really cool. I don't like him. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, another thing that people are going to realize from this is like the, that change, because I've always said that change doesn't happen at the national level, like voting for president, like all the people that have ever run for president have come into neighborhoods that are suffering and been like, we're going to turn this neighborhood around. And then obviously they get elected and nothing happens. So I've always said that if you really want to change something, it starts at the local level. Even now that's beginning to change and beginning to not necessarily be true. So I think what people are either realizing or what's going to become true is that change can't even begin in politics really it just has to start with people in the community outside of politicians and you know the infrastructure whatever getting ready and willing to make a difference and 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 give back what they have um that's 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 what it's all that's just that's just what it that's just what it has to be. There's no way around it at this point. Um, speaking of change, there's a little change coming to two in the cooler, no? Wow, Matthew, you're like a professional 
You're like a professional guy at this. That's unbelievable. Little, little, little change coming to two in the cooler. No, there is. There is a change. As as you'll see below, um, we've got it, our boom. You got to time it up with my snap. Yeah, that's what we're. Is that's well, <laughs> that's what we're gonna do. You snap twice already, so I don't know if it's gonna show up yet. But. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, but um, pick a snap, Andy. Okay, I'm gonna pick the. So, this um. <laughs> We've got. Uh, sorry, I got so distracted by all the snapping. But and Matthew's Matthew's phenomenal segue threw me off. Um, yeah, it's it's a new year, and you know, as people uh, age, they start to try and do things to make themselves look younger. And what we've done, our version of plastic surgery and the podcast, is we've got a brand new logo um, that we're really excited to unveil. Uh, and so Matthew, if you want to snap, I guess you'll see it right there. I think I'll, we'll fade into it. So should we'll I do see. a should I do a should I do a spin? Should I spice it up in any? Do, I don't know. Do whatever you want. We'll do like jazz a, hands jazz into hands. a clap. <laughs> Boom! And there and there it is. I think that's yep. the best way. Yeah, to that's do perfect. It. Jazz hands into a clap, and now you see the new logo. I think it came out really good. Yeah. Um, I think I think that you know Andrew and I. Talked a lot um, as the new year began, and you know we're thankful for everybody who continues to support us, whether it be on social media or by listening to the podcast or watching YouTube clips, whatever goes on. Um, I don't think people understand how much work Andrew actually puts into this podcast. I mean, I know I may be the pretty face, and I come on <laughs> here and I talk about absolutely nothing. Um, but we live and die by Andy. And um, as I said, I believe it was the last episode. Um, what did I say? Two in the cooler to the sky to or the something skies. like that? Yeah. It may, it, uh, the quote, actually, the Deion Dawkins article I was talking about earlier, he was talking about Stefan Diggs and the difference between a really good so, – somebody who's really good at somebody and somebody who is like a true superstar is – a true superstar has no ceiling. And I'll tell you right now, two in the cooler, guess what? We have no ceiling. No so ceiling. suck it, Hockey Canada. Suck two it in the hockey can- cooler. Again, it's <laughs> going in the fucking sky. And I'm goddamn excited about it. Another thing I wanted to say, and this is coming off the rip. I was thinking about this as I was showering before the pod. Okay. Didn't really talk to Andy about is it. Is this but, still um, about the – because you know, we have to give a shout-out to the guy who made the logo, though. I just want to make sure. Yeah, okay, do that. Because I was okay, – yeah, I was going to completely that, go okay? up. Okay, so shout-out to Mark Zastro who did this logo, insanely talented guy, and also one of the busiest guys that I've ever, like, talked to. Like, he's got this. He was doing a book. He cuts people's hair. Um, he also, he's started um, his uh, his music career now. He's got a single out called Anxiety that's really good. I think he's doing that with the Ivy League guys, actually, which is cool. Um, so check this out. His, his rap name is Mark. Mark the Aquarius, but shout out to Mark Zastro, and I thank God for him because he's doing a lot of he's doing a lot of work for us right now. Um, you know, we got some some surprises kind of coming for you guys in the future, but uh, yeah, shout out to Mark Zastro. Definitely go check him out. Um, uh, you can follow him at, at Bizmarkey. There's an underscore in there somewhere, and uh, definitely check out Anxiety because that song's that song's pretty good. Um, just had to get the quick plug for Mark in there because he, he's had a great to. guy. I, was, I love yeah. talking to him. Yeah. He's a really no, that was, cool guy. That was definitely needed. I don't even – oh, I remember what I was going to say. You know, the past few episodes, um, holidays, travel, all this stuff that's going on, it's been a little tough to land guests. Um, yeah. uh, just, you know, it's a, it's a timing thing, especially when I'm away and Andrew's got his own shit going on. Um, but – very soon, we will be pumping out as much content with guests. We'll be getting a lot of cool stuff going. A lot of, lot of stuff on the come up. You know, I'm not gonna, you know. Yeah, we definitely can't. Not gonna uh, say where we're going with exactly. it. Exactly. But it's coming. Yeah, around. it's coming around. We'll be coming around the mountain when you come. Mm-hmm. I have a memory. This is this is now. I'm really getting off the rails. I had two cups of coffee this morning, and I'm I'm unstoppable. Yeah, right now. you're really you're um, really zipping around today. <laughs> um, when I was still living at my old apartment, uh, I think it was my junior year of college. 
um, you know, so it, I was living with eight other guys. Sometimes you, you just, you know, get bored and, and do stuff with your roommates. And we would play, um, what's it? It's a card game. What's it called? Screw your neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. And you can, you know, you pass card, like whatever, like you see your card, you pass your card, whatever. And we're drinking. And when we would play, when somebody would, when somebody would look at a card and instantly pass it, there'd be a lot of times where nobody else would even check. I don't remember the exact rules. I haven't played the game in a long time, but it would just get passed all the way back around, assuming that that was the worst card that you could have and you were going to lose. And whenever we started seeing a card really getting thrown in rotation, we would always start singing that song. We'll be coming around my when she comes as the card would just fly around the table. And then, yeah, I don't know if that was, yeah, yeah but just, it just reminded me of that. <laughs> Good times. Good times. Yep. Luckily, mm-hmm. that song's in the public domain, so we don't have to. Although, yeah. I, feel, I feel like the way that you would sing it, we would never get copyright <laughs> for, for anything. It's funny. It's um, we were with... unrecognizable. <laughs> we were spending time with a little bit of family down here in Florida that we have. Um, specifically, uh, two of our cousins, Megan and Ryan. Um, shout out to them, because I know that Megan um, definitely keeps up to date, follows the podcast and stuff like that. Um, and Ryan brought his guitar last night, uh, he's in two bands. He's, he's a very talented musician and yeah. he's a talented overall kid. He's wicked smart. Yeah. Though, and, uh, both of those guys are really yeah, wicked smart. Yeah. Yeah. Wicked smart. Um, like janitor solving problems on chalkboard yeah, type shit. Probably the smart. wicked yeah. smartest of any of us, I'd say. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know if you've seen the rest of us. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I would say I would say they're top tier. Um, but he brought his guitar, and I was giving him a hard time the entire night because he didn't bring me a microphone. So how was I supposed to? Uh, smart guy. Was that's supposed- why. That's yeah. why he's so smart. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's wicked smart. So, um, but no, yeah, it was really nice to spend some time with them. Megan going into her freshman year of college next year, and um, Ryan's just kicking ass all over the board, doing what he's got to do, building computers and shit in his yeah. spare time. Um, you know, so happy I got to see them. Um, I feel like everybody in our family, except for like myself, has basically the same singing voice. Like you, Uncle Keith, Michael, um, Courtney, even Uncle Sean. <laughs> Dad's is a little more off key, I would say, than even, <laughs> because because I. But everybody's got the same singing voice. I obviously sound a little more like, you know, Andre Bucelli. Uh, uh, I've, got a, I've got a touch yeah, of that. That's but but um, maybe not Andre, but somebody is somebody <laughs> really good. Yeah, I don't even know. But it's all yeah. the same. Okay. And it's like, uh, I don't. You know what? I can't even do it without with when I'm thinking about it. It's but actually you know pretty. It's fun. like a little. It's like. <laughs> It's like, eh, I can't do it. I'm thinking about it, but yeah. it's like, hi. It's actually like, pretty funny how um, <laughs> spending time down here, we've been talking about, like, the power of genetics. <laughs> like, I was bitching yesterday because um, I swear that I <laughs> – I swear that there was a 12-pack of Coke cans, the like Coca-Cola cans, laying around the house. And I, I couldn't find them for the life of me. And people were looking for Coke so they could have rum and Coke, whatever. That's the signature drink of a few of our family members. And I I could have sworn that there was a case of them. So I'm digging around everywhere looking for them. And our Uncle Mike is kind of patiently waiting, maybe hoping that, you know, I come up with some, some Coca-Cola so we can have a rum and Coke. And um, I can't find it. And I start complaining. I'm like, the problem is, like, my dad just – like feels the need to tidy everything because when he sees something that's not in the spot that he thinks it should be in, he'll put it somewhere, but he doesn't tell anybody else where it is. And it turns out that that spot always only makes sense to him. Like it's the only thing like he's got a system, but it's only a system that makes sense to him. So I start saying this to uncle Mike and uncle Mike starts cracking up and saying like, I was, he's like, it's funny how genetics work. So as we walk out onto the patio, um, all four siblings are sitting there. So my father, Uncle Sean, Uncle Keith, Aunt Nikki, and Uncle Mike and I both start complaining about 
how they just they, they they put stuff somewhere and nobody else knows where it is. And all four of them, all four of the siblings are like, what do you mean? It's a perfect system. I'm like, yeah, it's a perfect system because it only works for you. It doesn't work for everybody else. And Uncle Mike's like, bring down the system. <laughs> so we were just having, yeah, we were having a riot and uh, just little things like that. Boy, um, that's rough. Do you yeah. do that? No, because no, you're, pretty, you're do... pretty like dirty guy. Like, you know, no, no. offense, but you're a messy fella. No, I don't know. I think I'm see this. I don't know if this is going to sound good or bad. You shower. I'm a not, lot, but I'm not messy when I'm like in my own space, mm-hmm. right? Right. Like at, well, I I shouldn't say I'm not, but I do like because even at my apartment, like I like things to look clean. Sure. For the most part, it's just your um, disregard for other people's space. That's that's the. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a, see. I didn't know how this was going to come out, and it already it already started. It turns out, yeah. But um, because I, yeah, it's like I, do, it's like when I'm here, yeah. I don't have a dishwasher at home, so I, you know, and I don't really like washing dishes, so mm-hmm. that's like my only downfall. But luckily, I have a, a roommate who often tends to wash dishes, and and it and when it when I notice that they're sitting there for long enough, that like he's probably waiting for me to do them, like thinking like. When the fuck is he gonna do them? That's when I'll I'll do them usually. But other than that, I like to keep the family room clean. I like to keep my bedroom organized, stuff like that. But when I'm a place like here, yeah, I mean it's really the dishes thing that gets me. It's like I see it, I see an empty sink, and I have a dirty dish, and I'm like, I'm just gonna chuck this dish in the sink. You know? Gotcha. That's my downfall. I definitely do that thing that Dad does with the like the tidy the thing. T- like shit. I literally like will sometimes just like. Basically be walking behind my girlfriend, like her shadow, just like putting things back. Moving shit that she does. And turning off lights has become a huge part of my life, which I think means I got one foot in the grave. (laughs) Yeah. You know that you're old when you start turning off lights. But I will say that I have gotten a lot better. When When I was a wee lad, I would intentionally, I think, turn on every single light that I could see and just never turn them off i definitely i definitely came full circle on that one but uh hey you know that's part of the job that's part of your job now andrew is that's yeah. that's your responsibility you're the tide here you have definitely hit you know what are you 20 going on 24 yeah so yeah you, you, i would say within three years i'll be putting you in a home <laughs> yeah that i don't think anything really you know yeah, anything's to come once you're at like forty-two. <laughs> right, that's kind of the end of life. Yeah, yeah. I okay. mean, no, I, yeah, not really. Well, we'll um, see. Well, it depends. Yeah, I guess it. I guess it depends. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't even know yeah. what else has been going on. It's just been well, a. It's just been a a whirlwind. Suck at hockey, Canada. Suck at hockey, Canada. That's right. Although speaking of Canada. One thing, I should say person from Canada who does not suck is Alex Trebek. And his final run of Jeopardy shows is this week. And they, airing this week? It's airing this week. They pushed it all back because originally his the last episode that he recorded was supposed to air on Christmas Day. But they were like, eh, maybe that's not cool. And, you know... A lot of people are going to be with not watching Jeopardy at that time anyway, so we'll push it back. So a part of my job is why is Jeopardy comes in the day before air, it airs, like the new episodes, and it's like watching them, making sure that they're like good to go and stuff. So I watch that show every day um, just <laughs> at work. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, know, I know that you've always been a Jeopardy fan, but I didn't know that that was – part of your job description so question have you do you think that you've retained enough knowledge to to become smarter from just sitting there and watching jeopardy absolutely i because sometimes if it's really busy i'll have to just like fast forward through it like you do um i have a jeopardy question for you right now i have two jeopardy questions okay first jeopardy question What team beat Canada 2-0 <laughs> in the 2021 um, 
Ice Hockey World Junior Championship. Buzz in. Buzz in. Yep. Andrew? What is USA? Yes, correct. Suck it, Hockey Canada. Suck it, Hockey. What is Suck it, Hockey Canada? Yeah. Question two. <laughs> and, and the answer is the Buffalo Bills. That's what <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now. That was the answer to the question. <laughs> what is the Buffalo Football Bills? Uh, yeah. Yep. When I, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I am I'm ecstatic. Okay, go ahead. I need to just I need to I need a lot. Yeah, you're going you're going wild. You're going you're going through a lot. It's that blue dolphin coffee mug. Yeah, hey, blue dolphin cafe. Shout out. No free dolphins, ads, but I was drinking your uh, Oh free ads for the blue dolphins. So. Yeah, for the blue dolphin. All right. Um But uh speaking of that sort of thing, we went uh you guys went to Tijuana Flats yesterday. How did you know this? I talked to our parents. Damn. And the first thing they said was, we're in the car going to Tijuana Flats. And I almost hung up because I was just so infuriated. We haven't talked I, about Tijuana Flats, the official you know, sponsor. Yeah, the of official, Tumacool non-official long, sponsor yeah, of Tumacool. in a long time. Yes. I didn't tell you on purpose. Because you knew it was going to make me so angry. Yeah, I figured mm-hmm. that that's one of those things that you just keep to yourself. But let me tell you something about Tijuana Flats. One, holy shit, was it delicious. I still have – you can do a thing called like megawana your meal. It's like a supersize practically. Oh, I'm getting angry. I'm balling up my fists. And so I obviously jumped on the megawana train. And um, I drove there. You know, because it was my, I was like, I'm craving Tijuana Flats. They were kind of like, oh, well, let's just go pick up some hamburgers and we can grill them for lunch. And I was like, "Mm, mm, 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 mm. I'm going to Tijuana Flats. If you want some food, submit your order through me. If you don't want some food, then you're out of luck because that's where I'm going. So I go there and it's about a 20 minute drive and I pick up the food. I'm so excited and I get home and they forgot to give me the second bag. They only gave me one bag, and the only food in it was mine and Hannah's. Dad and Mom's food was not in the bag at all. So I call Tijuana Flats, and I'm like, hey, I just picked up my order. Um, you know, half of it's missing. Um, I don't know if – I don't know who's on this Zon, blah, blah, blah. So Tijuana Flats just asked me. On their cake, the best customer service of all time. And they're like, well, if you want to come back and pick it up, we can remake it for you so it's hot, or we can give you the credit. And I was like, well, I would I didn't really want to drive back there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was prepared to take the credit, but the food was worth it to our parents where they were willing to drive back there and get the remade food. And um, so we were all able to enjoy Tijuana Flats yesterday. What a restaurant. I'll never forget the first time I had Tijuana Flats when I was with you. Yeah. When you were living in Orlando. And that is it's it's a life changing experience. Um it really is. I'm curious to how much money we would have to raise to open a franchise in Western New York. Like how much money does it how know. much does it cost? Tijuana Flats, if you're listening, how much does it cost for us to open a franchise in Western New York. I don't and know. for the rest of our listeners, how much are you willing to donate to us for us to open a Tijuana Flats franchise yeah, in here's Western the thing. New York? There's so many. There's like a, a Chipotle is such a popular thing. And I and love even, Chipotle. And even those. And I, I, they, both, they both have their place for sure. But if you think for one second that they're, you know, can, you know, out taco Tijuana Flats. It's a completely different. It's a completely different style of food. Completely. This is what I. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but this is how I think of Tijuana Flats. It's like a cross between like a mighty taco and a Taco Bell, but at a higher quality. Way higher quality for sure. Is what I would say. Like restaurant quality. American Mexican style food, right? Is that what you would say? Sure. 
yeah. and it is goddamn delicious. Man, glad we brought up Tijuana. That's Flats the because... biggest thing I think I miss from living down there. I remember when we, when I think when I first went to Tijuana Flats, my buddies were down there visiting me, and our one pal just re- like refuses to eat anything that he hasn't eaten before. So I just out of spite wanted to like take him to this taco place that served like all these kind of crazy tacos. Not even that crazy. Like they had a goat taco, which is freaking awesome. Goat um, tacos. I didn't know you could legally eat goat meat. I don't know if you're allowed to oh, advertise. Oh yeah, sure that. you can. You can. <laughs> this is the same as the horse conversation last week. Although, you cannot eat horse meat. Yes, you one hundred percent can. Uh, but you could. Okay, but that's different. Um. But I knew that he would like it, so we <laughs> we could not find this the place that I wanted to go. So we were like, okay, what's another like? Just Google like taco place around, and we wound up at this Tijuana Flats, and it you know we it was like it was like uh it was like what do you call it a uh, a freaking an oasis in the middle of the desert, and they've got all those hot sauces, and, and I don't even like to put hot sauce on tacos usually, but it's just so it's just this ocean of, of hot sauces and it's it's super impressive and you're absolutely right about the customer service like the like you walk into Tijuana Flats and it just feels like it feels like a community you know what i mean like it just feels like good and cool they to got a be massage table you get a quick hot towel action while you're you're waiting for your food um I did do a little research on horse meat. Mm-hmm. Um, you, did, you just Googled, can you sell horse meat? Can you eat horse meat? Well, so these are the articles that come up. Okay. Um, the troubled history of horse meat in America. And the, 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 the first line is, horse meat has a long history of causing problems in America. I'll stop right there. Um, is horse meat legal to eat in the U.S.? It says, yes, it is, and we ate some dot, dot, dot. After the horse meat scandal shook consumer confidence across Europe, I don't even know. Could Congress put hor- horse meat back on the menu in America? Why you really should but really can't eat horse meat? Why don't Americans eat horse meat? It's almost impossible to find horse meat in the U.S. Mm-hmm. How it became impossible for Americans to buy horse meat. Toxicity of horse meat. So I think that horse meat is definitely I, – I, I know that it's frowned upon. But some, it seems like it's actually a very big debate on the internet whether yeah. or not we should be consuming horse meat. Well, in Japan, I think it is, they will cut up horse meat like sashimi and just eat it. And serve it like a soup. Yeah. Like, and you can just eat it raw. I think, yeah. Even over that's, there. That, like, that's, that's, see, that's gross to me. I don't really like but sashimi or sushi. Like very good and very nutritious. Well, like horses are like good for horses, such powerful animals. Oh, yeah. Although it's almost like that thing, like people used to think, like, if you like drink the blood of somebody, you'll like gain yeah. their powers or whatever. Yeah, we just we could just use leeches to cure every disease in the world. Yeah, well, leech science is leech science is coming back without a doubt, yeah, as it should be. Yeah, those people that are, I'm not gonna get the vaccine, just <laughs> leech me up. Yeah, leech me up. Um, <laughs> Store random story. Then we, I think we should hop into the WWOW. I don't know if I might have left out a W there. Left out a T. Um, I think. Yeah, there's so many W. Oh, a T. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> they were. T- I heard a story last night from some of the members of our family that in Niagara Falls there used to be. So I don't know if it was in the actual falls. It might have been. It was either in the falls, Lewiston, or Lockport. It was like around. You know, Western New York, there was an ice cream place that was on a farm. So you could actually see the cows walking around that you were eating their ice cream. Like they were milking the cows, making ice cream out of it. And the cows were still just hanging out back behind the ice cream place. You'd be like, oh, yep, this chocolate ice cream came from uh, Moo Moo over there. And they'd point out the cow and, you know, he'd have a little bell around his neck. And, uh, yeah, so that, I, you know, I guess that kind of ties into uh, eating horse wow. meat. That's not so but, um, That's not like that thing of if you would like pick out the pig that your bacon is yeah. going to come from. You know what I mean? That's not as yeah. bad as that. Although or I like, honestly don't have a problem with that. I think if you're going to eat it, then you should be. Yeah, you should be able like, to. Yeah, to look at look your dinner in the yeah. eye. Yeah, because you're. 
look, yeah, look your dinner in the eye style. Um, so we're going into the Hooterman of the Week here. First Hooterman of the Week of 2021. An absolute powerhouse of violence coming at us here. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. Like, you want to talk about two killing machines. Like, you know, this is kind of the concept that who would win of the week was based off of, but we wanted to put our own spin out of it. But we also wanted to bring the heat coming into 2021. So we have Django from Django Unchained versus John Wick from John Wick. These are two absolute – this is going to be a battle. I don't know what's going on in your head, but I don't even know what's going on in my own head. Mm-hmm. But I, I want you to start and then – Actually, I want to start because I just want to tell you where my dilemma okay. is. Okay. My dilemma is that I love both of these movies yeah. a lot. And I think that the general public may come out hot siding with John Wick. Yeah. But I think that's a big – like people would really be underestimating – Django. They're both just violent motherfuckers. And I know that John Wick is like the best assassin of all time. But Django, I mean, he was in a time period where he should have had virtually no rights. And he became rich, saved his wife, and just killed whoever he really felt like along the way. Um, I think that they both have the same type of motivation. Django's ultimate goal once that movie starts is to find his wife, right? Mm -hmm. John Wick, so like that's his motivation. John Wick also likes to kill people that do things to the things that he loves, yeah. whether it be yeah. his dog, his car, whatever. Um, so maybe a little less heartfelt motivation, but in his eyes, it is still motivation. And to have any type of heart, I guess, as an assassin is very difficult. So props to John Wick for that. Um, out, all right, Andy, take over. Go into what you think. Let's start talking. Let's let's start talking one on one fight here. Yeah. I also actually can we say one thing? Okay. Is this a situation where, at the same exact time, somebody hands John Wick a piece of paper and Django a piece of paper and like puts it out on each other? You know what I mean? But oh, they're they have cool. to they're in separate places of the world. So it just becomes a you know, whoever, right, so you know, they're gonna find that, each other I and kill each other. Say, you know, they just are in the same place and they're and they just decide they want to kill each other? Yeah, yeah. Just maybe they and don't I, like each other. And I think you, like you rule out you rule out guns. Ruling out guns changes or everything. Do not rule out guns, I'm asking. Uh, well, I don't. Th- I think you should keep in guns because I. Okay, think that- I like that. I think all weapons, then, right? Knives too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Knives and everything. But that's a that's a fascinating point because if it's no weapons, then it's John Wick all the way because John Wick has got that. Like he's a, he you know he's got that martial arts background. Like he's really good at hand to hand. But you have to remember that Django was also a slave who got beat so he could take it. Mm -hmm. And he also several times, at least once, beat somebody to death in the movie, correct? Like with his bare hands? I don't remember him beating somebody. One of the brothers, I thought he really, I thought he like beat him. I I could be wrong. I could be just mismatching. But yeah, I think weapons, just because they both have that type of assassin background. Right, for sure. I mean, although I got. Django wasn't technically an assassin, but he was like a bounty hunter. Yeah, he was a bounty hunter. Right? Yeah. So they're both, you know, not only trained to use their weapons, but also expecting to have to fight people that are also equipped with some type of weaponry. Yeah. So what I want to say is that look at what Django did just in the 1800s with six shot pistols 
he killed. And he was a good shot, too. A great shot. That's a thing. That one scene where the guy gets away on the horse and he just picks him off. You know what I'm talking about? That when he – I mean, that scene when he when he shows back up to the house after his partner gets killed um, and he just starts blowing people away. And he's laying under the – he's laying under the yes, dead under body him. just shooting. Yeah. Crazy. And, and that guy just keeps getting shot, screaming. Yeah, it's a good scene. It's 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 an unbelievable scene, and it's it's it, you know it goes head to head with any super violent scene in any John Wick movie, um, and and Django takes out an unbelievable number of guys in that scene alone, and he did it all with the technology of the time. So what I'm saying is, if you give Django the Modern day technology. Modern day guns. I think that puts him. I th- I, I think, think that puts him on the same level as John Wick. A hundred percent. That's yeah. that's okay. That's what that's you're saying. What I didn't know about. if you were gonna say that. Yeah, because John Wick is proficient in. Like, if you could shoot as accurately as Django did with those guns, I mean, there's no way you'd miss anything with anything with what they're they're coming out with these. But days. John Wick, yeah, and John Wick is the same way. It, yeah. So. But that's the other thing is that they're also both smart in the sense where the chances of them giving each other a clean shot is rare. Yeah. And I think that t- for for both of them, a bullet anywhere to the head means absolutely nothing. It does not phase them at all. You know, you know, I mean, eventually, yeah, but like right. in a in a in that period mean. of time that's in which they're fighting, no. anything but a kill shot to the head is fairly is isn't going to deter them right away. Yeah, well the pain tolerance on both of these guys is probably through the they roof. They both take a beating. Yeah. yeah. Um Yeah. And I think hmm, This is tough. It is tough. I don't they might be so evenly matched in a firefight. I'm trying to think of how I assume that it would still come down. I I assume that it would still in every whenever like well, I'm I'm gonna say that Django is an assassin. Like that's just what I'm. You know, I mean, he is. Um, because you know he was a bounty hunter, but when it's dead or alive, he was just murking people. So, um, I think that. Ultimately, it's going to come down to more than just a gunfight. Yeah. See, that's kind I, that, of where I'm starting to lean as well. And then you have to consider... I, I, I've never really seen Django work with a knife, right? Mm-hmm. And if John Wick has a knife... I've seen John Wick work with a knife. Yeah. I've seen him work with a lot of stuff. So I think that, yeah, I, I think that they're so evenly matched in a firefight that they would both realize where this would have to go. However, let's consider, let's, let's consider this. Django's partner, who taught him just about everything, um, was for sure kind of a, a sneaky guy. Always had some tricks up his sleeve, including... The you know, uh, literally the gun up his sleeve. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, even when like he blows up the dentist car, yes, you know yes, what I mean? Yes. Like, uh, yeah. No, there's definitely, which is an unbelievable scene in Django, by the way, when they're trying to figure out the mask situation. You know what I'm talking oh, yeah. about? Phenomenal. Hysterical. Um. So I think that so when it when it comes to either hand-to-hand or, like, a knife type of fight, I think that Django would actually bring something into it, like, a you know, have some kind of little trick up his sleeve, whereas John Wick would just go in because, and, and rightfully so, because he just has incredible skill. Like, if, if, if Django doesn't have anything up his sleeve... And, Which I'm sure he does, though. Right, and, but if he doesn't, 
then it's John Wick all the way. Because Django, while, you know, he's, I'm sure he's had to fight, and like you said, he's uh, been, he's been but, through a lot. The, the skill is going to outmatch that every single time, the skill of John Wick. My thing is they're both the type of guys who, and follow along with me here, who don't need to have something up their sleeve to have something up their sleeve. Right. Like they would solve that problem, especially if Django, if especially if modern day, like, yeah, John Wick can do that because he has modern day technology. You put Django in that situation. I think again, it's both the same. I do think that John Wick would be considered a better hand to hand fighter, but you can never count. Jan- you can never count either amount. This is a very difficult fight. And my problem is, is that my mind is telling me that John Wick ultimately wins this fight. But I love Django. I love the movie. I don't know. I, I mean, it's a Tarantino movie that that instantly sways me. I, it's a it's a difficult choice. I, I guess what I have to say is, when it comes down to it, I do think that if they both don't end up killing each other at the same time, John yeah. Wick walks away victorious but not he doesn't walk away you know what i mean it is right. not going to be whoever is whoever lives isn't living comfortably at that point in time you know what i mean they gotcha. are they're neither of them are going down without a fight um i mean yeah it's i think it, i it's so thing. hard I don't to know tell if, if if either one could really kill the other. No, because I'm trying to think. I mean, you see both of them kill just like like being like one on like just murder machines. One verse just against the world yeah. and they're just slaughtering people. It's even when you like and you like and there even that scene where John Wick is is just killing that group of mercenaries that's fully decked out and yeah. pretty much unkillable yeah. equipment, right? Mm-hmm. Um, compared to, but then, you know, you can't really compare that to when Django's taking on a group of guys because, yeah, they might not have that technology, but Django's also not working with the technology, right? Yeah. John Wick has all, all of those, you know, like shotguns and, and different fully automatic weapons that he figures out can still do some damage in that situation um the other thing is both of these guys have the demeanor to win both yeah. of these guys yeah. are as slick as you can possibly back to be. what we were talking like that that goes back to what i was saying in the whoever if somebody does win this fight i don't even think that they would it would be considered a win because I think that they would be this halfway is, to a body bag themselves by the time. Is, um, they... This is reminding me now of like Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris. Well, which I'm they thinking... fought in such a movie, <laughs> and it was I know it's kind of nose tickle. <laughs> I, I think, but there was so, ultimately the winner of that fight, and that's why I think I'm picking one scene out in particular that that scene in John Wick where he's killed just about everybody else, but he fights that ninja type guy in the all glass room. And I think you watch that fight and you watch the caliber. I think you have to go John Wick in this fight. And it pains me to say it a bit because I I think John Wick if you have to pick a winner, yeah. if you have to, I think the safe bet is to go John Wick. But yeah. that's not to say that that script could be flipped by any means. This is one of those fights where gun to you know I always I, I always try to push you back you into a corner with the gun to your head. I think in this fight, gun to my head, I'd rather just have the person with the gun to my head shoot me than have to really pick a winner. But for the sake of the podcast, I think you have to go with John Wick. I think that. It's tough. You you can't really tell because you don't see Django with the equipment that John Wick has, but you've seen John Wick do it sure. at such a so you, you you know what I mean. So you yeah. go you yeah. go John Wick, and I guess like I said, gun to your head, you have to pick. I think that you just hope for the best, and John Wick. 
is able to, you know, find himself in a hand to hand combat situation where maybe they both already have somewhat of a gunshot wound. Sure, some couple of scratches on them. Yeah, they're both banged up. I think John Wick takes that. But I don't know. But again, Django's well, not going to go down without a fight. Like, I think that if Django got an opportunity to get his licks in, John Wick would be in some serious trouble. Because they're both, like, I imagine that hand-to-hand combat fight, like, being like, there being a point in that fight where John Wick has his thumb in Django's bullet hole, and Django has his thumb in John Wick's bullet hole, and they're just squeezing to see who passes out first. Hey! Fuck it, let's just keep going. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, fuck you, Craig. Honestly, Craig, you know what? Craig is... I would say that Craig might be a Hockey Canada fan. I bet you he is. Um, Yeah, fuck you, Craig, and suck at Hockey Canada. Um, So uh, this is you know what I mean? Like, can you picture? Yes. yes. Can you picture like incredible Jangle's thumb and John Wick's shoulder, and and John Wick's thumb and Jango's shoulder, and it's just who's gonna pass out first? Like that's that's how I see this fight ending. I don't know if this is a le- if this is a legal maneuver, but <laughs> I think that they might kill. I think that if they're going to kill each other, they kill each other simultaneously. I th- or I, just- I agree. I yeah, agree. I don't I think, think that, that you sense. can pick. If there has to be a winner, here's here's the thing: is that I think that if Django does have something up his sleeve, whatever it is, is going to win him the fight. But I feel that the logical track for this fight to go is that they ultimately do go into a a more hand-to-hand style be it using knives or whatever and in that situation John Wick takes it and while I and again like I said if I think that if Jango's got something up his sleeve then yes he wins but I just am not sure that that is logically where this fight is actually going to go I think it makes more sense that it goes in the other direction in the hand-to-hand direction and in yeah. that situation, it's John Wick. Because Django is, I mean, it's still going to be incredible, that fight. But <laughs> Django just does not ultimately have the skills in that situation to surpass John Wick. Because John Wick is incredibly skilled in that situation. And because they're and also not easily fooled. I think, I think fooled, that's another sure. thing. Not easily fooled. But if anybody's so going to do it, I think Django would be able to. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of decided then. I think we're both in the yeah. same page that if you have to pick a winner, you pick John Wick. But I wouldn't put the mortgage on it by any means. In fact, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even risk my Blue Dolphin Cafe coffee mug on John Wick winning this fight. But for the sake of the and I'm really curious. I hope that this. I think that if there was ever a who would win of the week that we can get some social media interaction on, it would be this one because those are two huge movies, and they're two movies that a lot of people enjoy. Yeah. Well, they're both great. Django's. I actually think so. that. Mm-hmm. Sidebar. You. <laughs> I wish that I could go back and redo this as a three-way who would win of the week, and I would be throwing um, Denzel in there from the Equalizer. Oh, my God. Could you imagine that three-way fight? Equalizer Denzel is underrated. Because that movie... I underrated? Don't... Yeah, I think he's, he's very underrated. God. I when know, he but sets I think he's his underrated. watch. But that's the thing. I. That's, what, uh, that's not what... Uh, that's not what underrated means. Underrated, I'm saying. No, I know, that, but I'm just saying. But I, I know. I was just saying, like, he's a, he's, a, he's so cool. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Man, equalizer Denzel. But I don't know how he would. But either way, yeah. Let's, guys. let's call it. Let's call it. Yeah, I don't think he. I think. Yeah, I guess I don't. I don't know that Denzel has the the firearms training that the other two do. Yeah. But if it comes into a hand to hand combat situation. That's not a guy that I think either of them are looking forward to fighting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. It's fun. like it's like what it's it's like the John I, like the John Wick movie where a hit gets put out on John Wick and uh-huh. people are like who the hell like there's not enough money in the world to try to convince me to go try to kill John Wick. You know? and, Yeah, I mean, I think we have to call it. There's no more. Yeah. There's no point. We're beating a dead horse at this point. We lock in John Wick as the unofficial winner of that fight for the purpose of the game's integrity, and we go from there. There he is. And be sure to vote on Twitter. We'll see what happens. Yeah, but- let's. Hey, let's get talking on Twitter. You know what I mean? Let's have this debate. I, I don't know. I think that... Sure. There's I one think, that could yeah. definitely be ta- flushed out yeah. even more than we have already. I agree. Without it, uh, you, Yeah, you could go back and forth on this forever. But um, we'll call it at John Wick. Um, I know. I've definitely been high energy today. Um, we've been going for, you know, what do we got? An hour and ten minutes. So, um, I don't know. What do you think, Andy? What else do you got in that well, rainy? Universe? We can we can call it. I don't want to keep you away from Florida. It is what it is. It's just Florida. So, man, I want to get down there so bad. Yeah, I mean, you're that de- you're you're you'll be down here twice within the next three months. No, I'll be down there twice, months? like within a month. I think. Yeah, I mean, but we'll coming down up, in March, so. and then uh, at Easter time again. Yeah, yeah, and I think that um, yeah. Kind of I think that I, that might we be. We were just talking about because this is the week where typically my pals, when we were in college, and you we would, would drive go. down there. Yeah, and we were just talking about like the past couple of days how great that was. Because um, we yeah, had a couple Snapchat crazy, memories popping up or something. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. We had some crazy drives down there. We. Like the first, the first year we drove down, um, we hit a snowstorm right away as we were going through Pennsylvania, and it was so bad that you know, we couldn't see the road and we couldn't see anything. So we had the GPS out and we were literally following the curve of Via the, the GPS because G- GPS, we couldn't see anything, couldn't see trees on the side or anything, could not see the road in front of us, had to use that. Um, so we got there then and we were like, we thought that was the worst of it. The next year, the next year was a life changing experience because Sam had a broken foot for the drive. Um, we were in Andrew's Buick again, our pal, you know, pal Andrew, had had his Buick, um, which was already starting to go on its last legs. Had a couple of dings, a couple of holes in it. And Georgia had its worst ice storm in the last 10 years, I think. And already when, you know, you go to a spot like that and just it starts to get a little chilly, it's going to shut down because they're not prepared and they don't experience Mm -hmm. it, so they kind of start to freak out. But this, God, I'll never forget seeing, seeing those you know, eighteen wheelers tipped over on the highway. It was, I was like, just wild seeing something that big just be tossed onto the side of the road like that. And there were a couple times. So before we really knew what was happening. We got an alert on the GPS that was like, if you go this way, it'll save you some time. Now, Jake was navigating. Let me tell you the moment I knew we were fucked. Jake is navigating, and he goes, oh, it says if we go this way, it'll save us like 45 minutes. And and so we're like, oh, that's great. Let's do it. So we get off the highway, and we're going to go around. So we started to get off, and we're like, oh, it's cool that it showed us the shortcut. And he was like, oh, yeah, it's great. This, this, It says it'll save us like 24 minutes. And that shift from 45 to 24, I knew that he was full <laughs> of shit and that we were just absolutely fucked. So we were driving on this road 
in the middle of nowhere, off the highway. We weren't even really sure where the highway or the interstate was at this point. And it was so icy. We had to drive so slow that Sam opened the door and stuck his hand out to feel the road. And it was an ice rink. It was completely covered. So we're driving and all of a sudden we just hit a patch the right way. And the car totally spins out on this road. And I just remember grabbing, and they were making fun of me for a little bit, because I grabbed the, the upper hand thing, and I just went, everybody hold on, like, just <laughs> like that. like Not like, Jesus Christ, just like, all right, everybody, and that, like, this is happening. Yeah. And we slammed, yeah. we slammed into a, um, uh, a speed limit sign. We like In whose car? In the tailspin, in, the, in this old Buick, so... We we spun around completely. We spun around like two times, and then the back end rammed into this sign, and that's what basically stopped us. And then this other car came, saw what happened, and they were like, "You guys all right?" We we're like, "Yeah, we're good." We kind of got situated and started on our on our way again, and then we looked behind us, and they did the same thing. So we went around and we were like, you guys are okay? And they're like, yeah, we're all right. So we get back onto the highway and it's I, it's like a photograph. Things are so still with these. And there's tons of cars and it's, you know, it's got, it's like one in the morning, I think. Probably even later. One, two, three, even in the morning, something like that. And it's just complete standstill. So we're trying to find a hotel there are no hotels. We get word. It was almost like, it was almost like old school, like California gold rush, like stories, like whispers of people finding their riches in the hills of California. We were like, there's, there were whispers that there were hotel rooms available in Savannah, Georgia. So Savannah became this promised land. And it was like, if we can just the get safe to Savannah, haven of Savannah, the safe haven yeah. of Savannah, it was like, if we can just get to Savannah, we'll be, we'll be safe. Like it's was literally like great depression, dust bowl. Like there's, there's work out in, out in Savannah. It's like, it's, it's like when you're in a zombie apocalypse and, and, and people are still holding on to like, no, like there, there's like a, there's a safe haven in like, you know what I mean? They're, you're that's, just holding on to Savannah, Georgia. That's exactly what it was like. So we called this Days Inn in Savannah, and they were like, we have one room if you can get here. And we are like, we, we are so close to Savannah, Matthew. Like, not very many miles, like less than 50 miles, I would say. We're very close to Savannah. And they're like, if you can get here in the next like two and a half hours, you know, it's, it's all yours. Because they're completely booked up. And we're like, we'll take it. We never made it. We, it got so crazy that we ended up having to pull to the side of the road and sleep in the car for about two hours. Had to turn the car off because we would have run out of gas. Put the windows down, to like cracked the windows, I should say, because, um, you know, you don't want to like get hot and suffocate or whatever. And there's four of us in this car. And... It was freezing outside. Like it was, it was all ice. So it was, you know, in the twenties, if not colder. So it's like four in the morning, and we're in this car. We don't have any blankets. We have like three beach towels. So Sam and I are in the back seat. We have to share a beach towel. Jake and Andrew are up front. They've each got theirs, and it was. I've never had an experience like that where it's like you have to get such minimal sleep just to survive. Like, it wasn't because we were, like, tired and had to rest. It was because we had to. Like, we didn't have a choice. Like, we had to get, like, these this minimal hour of sleep. So then we wake up two hours later, and things are starting to move. We finally get to the Florida-Georgia line line the border and it was like the red sea opened when we hit that line matthew the highway was completely open 
So we got out at this rest stop that's there uh, right at the border, and we kind of switched out. Again, Sam's foot is broken this entire time. And was, it's, he, what are we, was he in a cast? Like what? He had a boot. He had a boot on. Okay, boot. So that was making it worse because only three of us could drive. He had to keep it like somewhat elevated on like the middle part and up thing. And Jake just kept elbowing his foot. So it was it was it was set up to be a miserable trip and then all this happens. So we switch out and Jake and I get in the front uh to, to drive. I'm I'm driving and Jake and Jake's navigating Andrew and Sam try and get some sleep in the back. We are in Georgia. The sun is up. It's like You mean Florida? You're in Florida at this point? Oh, I, I must have I must have been wrong. I'm sorry. So we're we're just in Georgia, whatever. Okay. So we're, we have not hit the Florida. So we're we were hit the Georgia to like South Carolina or whatever. So we're in Georgia, and it finally felt like the wind was at our backs, like we are. Yeah, it was pushing you home. Yep. All of a sudden. We start to hear Jake and I this this like this scraping noise. And it's it happens very briefly at first. So we both just ignore it. Like we're just talking and then the it happens and we you can tell that we both kind of freeze up, but then we just keep talking. Like maybe it's just something in the room. So we keep going a few minutes and it scrapes again. And then it starts to scrape and then the scrape just becomes continuous, continuous scraping. So I'm thinking something is falling off the bottom of the car. So we pull over. Sam and Andrew wake up. They're like, what's going on? So luckily all it is was the the little plastic guard under the car was scraping. But we can't drive with it hanging like that. Just rip it off? Here's what we did. We had Andrew had a length of rope, about six feet. We found where it was loose, the guard, tied the guard, and then we tried to tie it to something else, but it didn't work. And then we were going to cut the rope. We didn't have a knife, so we were going to cut the rope with a key. Obviously a terrible idea. So all we did was we, we tied this long length of rope to the guard, and then... Um, Did you close it in the door? That's what it I would in done. the door. Yeah. There you go. So then we drove around like that for the whole week of Florida. So eventually we made it. We ended up being in the car for 36 hours. And we finally made it to Florida. We drove around like that. And ultimately, yeah, we ended up ripping. On the way back, we just ripped, we just ripped that thing right off. Um, it's just a scrape guard. I mean, you exactly, probably could have let exactly. it scrape, to be honest. But it would have been annoying. Um, I've never heard that story before. I will never drive to Florida. I would never do it. I would never sit in a car for that long. We were just saying that we can't wait. Like, we want to do it again. Because it was terrible, but it was so fun. I mean, I've driven recently to Georgia. And I'm not saying road trips aren't fun. But it wasn't really a vacation that I was driving to Georgia for. For. I would never want to drive to a vacation because I feel like the drive would be so miserable on the way down that I would legitimately rather like just swim out into the ocean and just let myself sink than to have to drive back. I don't know. Maybe for you, but for us, I don't know. There's, I mean, you guys are a- all have jobs now. Why would you not just – for the because for the suffering of it, I guess I don't know, I don't know, but man, those were the days. Yeah, I got oh, a, lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of stories about those lot, trips. But. A lot of Florida stories. Well, we'll have to get them when next time you're in Florida. Yeah, yeah. All righty, Andy. Yep, that'll do it. And speaking of Florida, have a good time. Yeah, I'll do my best. We'll see you soon. And all right, folks. Hey, it. couple last things. Shout out to Mark for the new logo. Can't forget that. Check him out, Andy. Make sure we get his stuff out on social media so other people can check him out. Yeah, we'll be tagged in case they need stuff. similar uh, similar stuff. Um, I'd, I'd love to get to get fired up on Twitter about um, 
the who would win of the week. I've already been fired up on Twitter since about midnight last night um, because suck at hockey Canada. Suck at hockey Canada. Yep. So I will end on suck at hockey Canada. Andy, I love you. I'll see you soon. Let's do it. I love you too, Matthew. Let's get out of here. Have a good time in the Sunshine State. Dessert.